Not everything the Bible says is as clear as you think. There are many details that even today we have overlooked. One of these most enigmatic stories is the Serpent of Genesis, whose interpretation goes beyond what is commonly believed, since we have misinterpreted it for years. What does this story really hide? The answer is much more incredible than you think. Stay until the end of this video, where we will explore an extraordinary interpretation of the snake. That promises to reveal ancient mysteries and change your perception of the world forever. The story of the serpent in the Garden of Eden is one of the best known and most commented on in the Bible. In the book of Genesis, the serpent is the creature that tempts Eve to eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, triggering the fall of man. But what does the snake really represent? Do you question some time? Interpretations vary widely, and each offers a unique perspective on this enigmatic symbol. To some, the snake is simply an ordinary animal, a part of the Garden of Eden setting. In this interpretation, the focus is not so much on the nature of the serpent itself, but on the action it performs, tempting Eve. Here the snake is seen as an agent of temptation, but without necessarily a malevolent undertone. Another more common interpretation is that the snake represents Satan, the adversary. This vision is based on the idea that the serpent is a manifestation of evil that seeks to deceive humans and distance them from God. In this context, the snake is not just an animal but a symbolic figure of the enemy of God, one who seeks to pervert divine creation. However, some scholars and theologians suggest that the snake could represent something more abstract, such as evil in general or human temptation. According to this interpretation, the snake is a symbol of the forces that lead us to make wrong decisions, of our own weaknesses and desires. In this sense, the snake is a personification of the internal challenges we face in our struggle to live according to our values and principles. So which of these interpretations is correct? The answer is found in the original texts of the Bible, which are written in Hebrew, in which we can capture nuances and connections that are lost in translation. In the book of Genesis, the word Arumi is used to describe the nakedness of Adam and Eve before their disobedience, and Aram to describe the craftiness of the serpent. Although these words seem different in English, as they are translated as naked and crafty or cunning, in Hebrew they share the same root, suggesting an intended connection between these concepts. This connection invites us to reflect on history in a deeper way. Before eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve are naked, but are not ashamed. They are in a state of innocence and purity. The serpent, described as cunning, represents temptation and deception. The similarity in the words makes us think about how the snake's cunning leads to the loss of innocence and the appearance of shame. This play on words can also make us consider the complexity of human nature. Nudity symbolizes vulnerability and transparency, while cunning can represent intelligence and the capacity for deception. In the Garden of Eden, before eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve lived in a state of harmony and purity, connected to the divine and in tune with their environment. This state can be interpreted as a higher level of consciousness, where the human being was more aligned with his spiritual nature and less influenced by material desires and basic instincts. The snake losing its legs and beginning to crawl represents this fall from a higher state. Originally, the snake may have symbolized a creature with more freedom and mobility, but after its deception and the consequent disobedience of Adam and Eve, it becomes a symbol of materiality and degradation. This change also reflects the constant struggle within the human being between his instinctive material sides and his intellectual spiritual side. The snake crawling on the ground reminds us that after the fall, humanity became more rooted in the material and earthly. Our instinctive desires and physical needs began to dominate our lives more. On the other hand, the story of the snake and the fall also tells us about the capacity of human beings to overcome these challenges. Although we are now more connected to the material, the presence of our higher consciousness, represented by our intellectual and spiritual capacity, remains within us. The struggle between these two aspects of our nature is an essential part of the human experience. Every day we face decisions that reflect this duality, choosing between satisfying an immediate desire or following a path that leads to deeper spiritual growth. This fight is not easy, 
but it is fundamental for our development as human beings. Learning to balance our material needs with our spiritual aspirations is an essential part of our journey. If we continue exploring the Hebrew text, we may find another big surprise. Each letter of the Hebrew alphabet has a numerical value, and sometimes words with the same numerical values can share hidden and meaningful connections. A fascinating example of this is the word for serpent, Nahash, and the word for Messiah, Masiya, which have the same numerical value. The words Nahash and Masiya both add up to 358, a numerical equivalence that suggests a deep and symbolic connection between the serpent and the Messiah. The serpent, as we saw in the story of the Garden of Eden, is often seen as a symbol of evil, temptation, and the fall of man. It represents our material and instinctive desires, those aspects of our nature that can distance us from a spiritual path. In contrast, the Messiah is seen as the Redeemer, the one who will bring salvation and elevate humanity to a higher state of consciousness and spirituality. The equality of their numerical values suggests that redemption, represented by the Messiah, does not imply rejecting or destroying the material, but rather transforming and elevating it. In other words, the path to redemption is not simply to escape our material desires and temptations, but to learn to integrate them in a way that helps us grow spiritually. This teaches us that all aspects of our lives, including those that seem low or unworthy, have the potential to be elevated and used for a higher purpose. Temptation and desire, symbolized by the serpent, are not in themselves negative. It is our relationship with them and how we handle them that matters. The Messiah, then, not only comes to save us from the material, but to show us how to find holiness and redemption in the midst of our daily lives. It teaches us that every challenge, every temptation, is an opportunity for spiritual growth. By facing and transforming our weaknesses, we can reach a state of personal and collective redemption. This connection also invites us to see the world with new eyes. Instead of seeing matter and spirit as opposites, we can see them as complementary aspects of our existence. Our challenge is to find balance and harmony between them, elevating the material so that it serves a spiritual purpose. This search, without a doubt, is a journey that encompasses both the personal and the collective. It is a call to elevate ourselves and our community to a higher state of consciousness and spiritual connection. Personal work begins within each of us. It involves examining our own actions, thoughts and emotions, and making the necessary changes to align ourselves with higher spiritual values. This involves facing our own internal challenges, overcoming our weaknesses, and working on developing qualities such as compassion, kindness, and gratitude. At the same time, personal work is not just an individual effort. It is intrinsically connected to the collective work towards redemption. We live in an interdependent community, and our actions have an impact on others. Therefore, elevating the collective nature is also essential for the fulfillment of divine purpose in the world. Collective work involves building relationships based on understanding, respect, and mutual support. It means working together to address social and environmental problems and contributing to the well-being and prosperity of the entire community. In a world full of divisions and conflicts, it is essential to seek reconciliation and mutual understanding. By recognizing our interconnectedness and shared humanity, we can work together to overcome the barriers that separate us and build a more just and peaceful world for all. Redemption, then, is not just an individual goal, but a shared journey toward transformation and the realization of divine purpose in the world. It requires both personal and collective work, each complementing and strengthening the other in the pursuit of a better, more spiritually vibrant world. That is the message that the Snake of Genesis wants to give us, one that without a doubt will improve our lives at great levels when we begin to understand it.